So we've got the risk warning on the screen here. We'll, uh, we'll cruise through that and get started. Apologies, by the way, for uh, anyone who turned up to last week's disaster of a webinar. <coughs> Uh, we'd switch webinar software to avoid sound problems, uh, but somehow I managed to record a webinar with no sound. But you can hear me now, so uh, we're all good. So a bit more stable in markets uh, today. We've obviously not got uh, the U.S. trading session uh, because it's Martin Luther King Jr. holiday in the United States, and so the New York Stock Exchange is not open. So. Typically, the pattern on these kinds of days when the U.S. isn't trading is that we get all our activity in Europe kind of early on and then start to slow down a bit from sort of from here on in. Um, that certainly doesn't have to be the case because of the volatility of oil prices. <clears throat> you know, uh, markets are literally tracking oil up and down. So at the moment, oil is well off its lows. But, uh, you know, that could obviously change. As it has throughout most of last week, we saw days in which oil was right at the bottom near the lows of the day, and then uh, and, uh, equities were well in the red, all bounced back, equities came back, and then we did, you know, back and forth several times within the day. So great trading environment, um, but in terms of being able to call uh, where the market finishes at the beginning of the day, at the end, you know, uh, where it's going to finish, it's uh, very difficult, very choppy. So for those who are not familiar, the general format here is that we'll just um, look through some of the major markets, <coughs> some of the more popular markets. If you look here on our platform, um, then uh, we've got our uh, popular products list, the kind of things that are in there. That's what we're going to concentrate on. But if there is something a bit more unusual that you were looking at, or just some other topic you wanted to discuss, this is, so, you know, it is an interactive webinar. Um, so you can send a chat either to the group or just directly to me. Um, and, uh, you know, we can answer it that way. Um, obviously, if you send it directly to me, then uh, the rest of the group doesn't see you ask the question. Now, let's start with, uh, with indices. Um, as I mentioned, I think the sort of main driver today is the, that drop to 2003 lows in Brent, but then the subsequent recovery, leaving us kind of flat as cash, cash indices stand. Obviously, the closing time of our indices is slightly different, leaving our um, products in slightly in the green here. <coughs> Let's look at the UK. Now, you can see that we, we flashed down below the August lows here. So we're right at the bottom of the trading range. So these ranges obviously never hold perfectly. So say this was the low back in July, just to take an example. We found a peak just above that, chopped down, made a peak just above it. But you can see that it's this, this general level of, of resistance that was holding the market down. Here we turned down a, little, a few pips below, uh, a few points below, but nonetheless, it was that same level holding it. So same thing here. This was the August low. We flashed below it a bit. We could push a bit lower. Uh, but as long as we can close above, generally in the sort of 6, 800 type vicinity, then we've got a good good chance of a rebound here because this, this really is a line in the sand. For those who read the, uh, the mid-morning note in the platform here, <coughs> Um, you know, this is a line in the sand that a lot of people are looking at across indices, so we'll look at the U.S. markets as well. Um, you know, really, uh, this is kind of the, the boundary between a range-bound market and a downtrending market for the moment. So if we can hold above here, good scope for a rebound. But obviously, it was a, it was a rough finish to the last week where we'd been chopping around above the 6900 level, or the 5900 level for a while, and, uh, and then suddenly dive right back down to below these August lows. So, not a you know, difficult finish, uh, but still, we're getting a little bit of a rebound today, so chance of some support coming in. So the general bias here, I think, is that we're below the moving averages. We're seeing, um, as I mentioned here on the screen, we've got um, this long-term range support, which is what's preventing us from going all out bearish, because we do have these downward sloping um, lower high and lower low on the weekly chart as well. So range-bound conditions with a bearish uh, bias suggesting we could eventually break to the downside. Now. What could determine whether we hold these lows fundamentally is, um, you know, the focus obviously have been oil prices. Difficult to call uh, whether oil will be up or down each day. 
Um, but if we see renewed pressure on oil prices, that's certainly going to be a catalyst to push to the downside. And uh, the, this evening, so sort of early hours tomorrow, we had the release of a, um, a number of Chinese pieces of data, GDP China, for China, Chinese industrial production, and Chinese retail sales. So um, that's, that's um, you know, whether those numbers can show some renewed signs that maybe there's a bit of a bottoming out in industrial production and maybe that the retail sales numbers can continue to improve, um, then that, you know, that would be positive. Um, if we saw a, a, see a worse than expected industrial production number particularly, I think, you know, that really could be the renewed downside. If you remember a couple of weeks ago when we first kicked off trading for this year, it was the, um, firstly, the manufacturing sector data on the Monday and then following the service sector data later in the week that was the catalyst for some um, sharp down days in the market. So we've got kind of more more data on those on those sectors. You know, the retail sales telling us more a little bit about internal demand in China, um, and uh, and, this, and the retail sector obviously, uh, which is essentially the service. You know, a big component of the services sector, <clears throat> and that uh, industrial production, which is obviously telling us what's what's coming out of the, the manufacturing sector. GDP, uh, you know. This is to some extent the case with a lot of countries where this number is a little bit fudged. China even more so than most, I think. And so we can't necessarily put a lot of stock in whether this number comes in slightly ahead or below of expectations because um, it is, I think most people would agree, to some extent politically influenced. So that's going to be a big catalyst, I think, going into the rest of the week. Um, but then from there on in, we're not hearing as much from uh, from China. So we've seen uh, we've seen a bit of a pattern last week where Chinese markets have not been uh, such an influence over uh, as in the Chinese stock market. Its end of day performance has not been really so much of a correlation to uh, the um, uh, to European markets, even U.S. markets. If we put up the the U.S. 30 here. <laughs> We've seen more that the European markets have been reflecting more what's been happening with the Chinese yuan, the Chinese currency. So uh, that's probably going to be a big catalyst for the rest of the week in terms of equities. I would say we've got this data. It's going to set the precedent overnight, and then what happens with the yuan going forward. Something that happened today was that um, the Chinese government have introduced um, uh, restrictions on um, foreign banks holding Chinese yuan, uh, which is sort of, um, you know, they basically added a reserve ratio, a certain amount of money the banks have to hold um, with the central bank of China if they've got, uh, if they're doing some dealing in, in the Chinese yuan. So that's sort of just with the idea of restricting yuan speculation, and that, you know, that could act to hold up the Chinese yuan depreciation for a little bit, and that would be that would be supportive of markets. So that would be a positive catalyst. If we see the yuan turn down again, despite these efforts by the government, that could be the catalyst for us to break those August lows to the FTSE and um, and uh, break through these uh, September lows for the uh, the Dow Jones, and as obviously as we trade at the US 30. I think a um, a first area of support, should we should we push lower, will just be where we rebounded to when we had that large sell-off day uh, that kind of called the bottom in August. Where we where we closed, that will be a consideration because that was even after a massive rebound and we closed back in that same vicinity. Basically, in the sort of 15,750 area, I think could be a next area of support. Below there, then I think we're just looking out for an outright challenge of the August low. To the top side, the last real um, high high that we formed on the daily chart was up here at 16.625. So should the market manage a decent rebound up to there, we could find some more selling interest in that kind of area for um, for another for another go at 16,000 and below. But again, just like the UK markets, the, the you know we're in a um, <coughs> Uh, you know the sort of the, the the technical indicators, if you like, are pointing us towards a, a downward bias because we're below that 200 DMA. We're well below even the um, the, the 20 
day moving average, and we've got these uh, lower highs and lower lows being formed on the on the weekly chart, giving us a general sort of uh, downward bias. But we've got to be aware of the the support that's coming in, which is pretty strong support from that um, September low. So going long. At around the 16,000 mark in the US 30, a bit of a risky proposition because you're going against these downward trends. Nonetheless, it is strong support. So perhaps with a little bit of a confirmation, perhaps from a, um, a big reversal on the, the daily chart, um, or, uh, or indeed if we can manage the, the week with a, with a higher close, that would go that would go some way to say that we're. Um, you know, we're managing to push back into the range. So back above this 16.25, which was this um, this peak reached in, in January, <clears throat> not for the month of January, but this um, high high reached in uh, lower high beat reached in January. Then I think then we're pushing back into that 17,000 round number and the lows that we broke down uh, quite sp uh, quite spectacularly at the start of the year around the 17.100 mark. Um, another thing that will be dictating U.S. markets uh, this month uh, is the um, is the number of earnings that are coming out. This week is, is kind of gearing up a bit. We've got a few more big banks releasing earnings, um, a few Dow Jones companies. Uh, next week's when it really kicks into gear. Um, big focus, obviously, will be Apple because that's actually been underperforming quite significantly recently. Um, Apple has been a laggard in this downturn rather than a um, rather than a leader so it's showing sort of some relative weakness to the to the Dow Jones and so investors you know will be because so many so many large funds hold uh, Apple shares if Apple starts performing badly they're going to have to liquidate those shares and then they're going to look around and think where else they would want to put them and Maybe they're not going to feel too encouraged, and maybe that money doesn't go back to work in the stock market until lower levels. So, got a similar sort of pattern going on here, where this is actually something akin to a choppy head and shoulders reversal here in Apple. Um, we haven't got a, a full dip down to the um, the neckline here, but it could be something like that as the head, that as the right shoulder. So. That again, it's this August low again for Apple. Below there, uh, if, a if Apple rolls over with the general market, um, then we could be finding ourselves below that 200 week SMA, which has been supporting the price for a long time. And we could find ourselves right down, right, right the way back down to these lows formed in, um, formed in July. Which would be a big drop because you know we reached as high as 135-ish, you know that would be taking us back down to 50. So that that would be Apple wiping out more than 50% of its value. So that would be difficult for the overall market, in my opinion, is to perform well if uh, Apple were to do so badly. Jumping over to currencies, uh, one of the worst performing currencies of late has been the British pound. Let's have a look at cable here. So here were the lows from April of last year. Uh, we just crushed straight through there with barely any any signs of support. Should we get a bounce back up to that? I think that could be uh, you know support turn resistance. Although it didn't really act too much as a support the uh, the next time around. Um, that could be an area of selling interest. More in the short term though. Uh, we've got the, these previous, uh, this previous level around the 143.50 area that held the market up for a few days before a big sell-off on Friday. So a little rebound up to there could find some selling interest. Back through there and back through the, the, the Friday high, and I think that could be when we start when we push all the way back up to this uh, 146, 145.70 rather. 145 is obviously a big round number possibility as well. But if we scale out to this weekly chart, we can see quite a solid downtrend in cable here. And then if we pull right up to the monthly chart, this is when it gets interesting. And uh, you, I'd certainly recommend if you are a cable trader to check out uh, Michael Houston's report on a uh, on a possible long-term support in cable. Um, it's down right at this 143 type mark where we are at the moment. That's that's the lows from. Uh, from 2010. So you can see that that's basically where the market is right now. And so you just look at this range. You know, 
every time it hits the top of the range in the 170 mark, rolls over. Every time it gets down to the sort of 140 mark, it bounces or thereabouts. But this is the kind of sideways range we've been in uh, for a long time. And for those more of a conspiracy type mindset, that's the way the central banks like it. They, they try to, you know, talk the currency up and down, you know, change policy accordingly to, to keep currencies within a stable range. Um, central banks don't like a massively accelerating uh, currency, don't like a really fast depreciating currency. Um, sometimes they view currencies as overvalued and they want to see a steady depreciation, but nothing too dramatic. Um, and, and likewise, you know, we could get to the point where the Bank of England gets a bit uncomfortable about how fast the pound is losing ground against the, the US dollar and start to change their wording appropriately to, to kind of unsettle a few short sellers. And, you know, that's when we could see the beginnings of a bottom um, around this 140 mark. So certainly bear this, um, you know, short-term trading, you know, you've got to say the trend is very much to the downside, as we saw in that daily chart, lower lows, lower highs in the, in the weekly, below, well below the 200-day moving average, RSI well into, you know, um, oversold territory, which does risk a bounce, but, uh, you know, we've, we've been oversold for a while now. We've been oversold since the price was at 148. We're back down at uh, 143 now, so 500 pips of the, the market being oversold is not necessarily a catalyst to buy, but you've just got to be aware of the risk. Um, Data-wise, we do have a bit out this week for the UK. Uh, tomorrow we've got CPI, and then on Friday we've got retail sales. And of course on uh, Wednesday we've got the, um, uh, the unemployment data, including average earnings. So one of the things the Bank of England have been quite dour on is the fact that um, after getting that spike in average earnings growth, it's kind of tapered off a bit since then. And so we were looking at earnings over 3% a year. Now they're down at uh, just over the expectation this time around on Wednesday is that it drops down to 2.1%. So um, if that comes to a fruition, um, or even, or, you know, if earnings drop even worse, down to two or even less than two, you know, that would be a massive down drop for cable probably. That earnings number is going to be a big one. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, inflation is very weak, but it, it's hard to really see the CPI number on Tuesday um, changing the dial too much on the expectation for inflation. It's, it's just, it's, even if it's, if it's 0.2, you know, obviously it's going to be a bit supportive of the pound. If it ends up being 0.1, you know, slightly negative on the pound, but overall we know inflation is going to be low for the time being, especially with oil prices making uh, decade lows. Switch over to the euro. Now, a tricky one in the euro at the moment. It does, you know, off since since that um, that massive move on December 3rd um, during the, the Mario Draghi press conference, um, shot all the way up to above 110, but 110 has basically been capping the price action since. It dropped down to just above 0.7, that was about a 61.8 retracement of that big move um, from, from the low to the high um, on December 15th. Um, and we've pushed back into this 110, but just not not really got past it. Um, it's, it's almost so 108, uh, 109.87 is kind of um, the, the 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 resistance that we um, have really been specifically rebounding off on the last one, two, three, four, five attempts. So I, it does to me look like we. Um, to me, this looks like a. a bounce off the lows, a consolidation um, before another rebound, but we've got significant overhead resistance from the 200-day and this 110 level. So it's, uh, the market's struggling to get through it, and the trend is the trend is officially lower, as I define it, well below that 200-day moving average, and while we're making a lower low and lower high on the weekly chart. So. It's a bit like, um, you know, the, the trend is telling you to sell, but you've got this strong suspicion that it's, um, this trend is going to reverse. So, to my mind, in that situation, inaction 
generally best until we get some confirmation one way or the other. So we're in that one, uh, 108 to 110 range. Um, now you can obviously buy and sell at the bottom of the range and the top of the range uh, with tight stop losses. Um, but in terms of something more directional, you really want a probably at this stage a weekly close above or below one of those levels. Dollar yen's been very active recently um, because just because the we've we've been seeing a bit of a sell off as as we previously spoke about in equities. And so the yen is a safe haven, and the dollar yen is a um, something that correlates very well with um, <clears throat> U.S. bond yields and and uh, indeed U.S. stocks has been selling off, and so that's been a big people piling to the yen as a safe haven, um, and uh, it's taken right down below 117. But we're finding a bit of support in that area. Um, you know, the big kind of line in the sand here is where we saw that massive rebound just above 116 in August. And obviously, we're talking about an August low here in dollar yen, just the same as we're talking about an August low in equities. It's a similar, similar deal, really. Um, we did have this triangle pattern, which we seem to have um, concluded to the downside. But it still could end up being, you know, if you extend the chart out this way, and you draw this line in here, what you can kind of see is that actually it could be a sort of uh, either either just a kind of rectangle pattern or just a kind of downward sloping triangle with a flat bottom. And so then it's in this kind of 116 area that we're looking to, to break to the downside. And that, that's been holding since November 2014. So that's, that's a big area of support right there. You know, I think what can push us down through that? You know, just continued risk aversion that send equities lower, break through, break through the August lows in equities, and we're pretty much heading down in similar fashion with uh, with dollar yen. I'd say, just because it doesn't look like the Bank of, Ch of Japan, given the relative lack of success the current quantitative easing program has brought the Japanese economy, probably just aren't too keen to. Um, uh, to add to stimulus. And I would actually say something that's not been talked about too much, <clears throat> an outside possibility for for this year in terms of a sort of shock to markets would be the Bank of, Bank of Japan just abandoning their QE program just because it hasn't worked. That would be quite a shock, and uh, dollar yen would drop, and I think it would take equities with it. <laughs> Now, there are some other big FX movers, but I've not had any specific requests uh, from you guys on that, so I'm going to switch over to commodities. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the bread one is um, screwed all. We saw the lowest since, I think it was November 2003. <clears throat> um, so, obviously, our price is a slightly different, but yeah, it looks like, you know, this price down here, that's where we've got to. So. You know, we've obviously taken out uh, those 2008 lows. We're basically coming down to test uh, these really low levels from back in 2001. Got to believe we're close to a bottom in Brent, but um, you know, <clears throat> given that uh, um, markets can still swing around by a few dollars in a day, each one of those dollars is um, a high percentage of your position. And so if you are going long crude, you know, you'd certainly need the um, the capital in your account to withstand um, large large drawdowns while, while the market finds its bottom because, you know, it's almost certainly going to push past your entry point at some point. Very difficult to catch a, a bottom in the market. You know, if we if you if you're trying to pull up, uh, if you're trying to bet on a bet at 27, you've got to be aware that um, the market could drop to 20. In which case, that's 25% of your account. <clears throat> so obviously, especially when using leverage, you know that could be uh, could be lethal. So you need to have that that math calculated if you are going long term on oil. Probably a slightly more conservative approach. <clears throat> 
is to look on the, the short-term charts and look for a bit more of a clear sign that actually a bottom is being put in. No sign of that really at the moment, other than the fact that we're off the lows today, but that's a very temporary phenomenon. Mentioned in the, uh, the chart forum post here that there's a few layers of potential resistance. <coughs> Excuse me. Already signed to come off the first one that I highlighted this morning, which is around the sort of 2878 kind of area, basically just that low formed on the 14th. You know, the, that sort of general pattern of a uh, lower low, lower high, come up, where do you find the lower high again the next time in the vicinity of the previous lower low? So markets could roll straight off from here. If we do manage to push high, we've got this declining trend line, which has three successful touches. So um, could get that just around the, the 30 round number. So a confluence of potential resistance here from this low, this declining trend line, um, and the, the round number could find a few sellers in that potency. If we get through there, then I think that would probably, because it is a confluence and, and potentially significant resistance area, we could carry us all the way up to 31.20. And then I think if we get through 32.05, basically the 32 round number, I think that would be, um, you know, because the market is so heavily short, I think probably a lot of covering positions in that kind of area, and that could carry us all the way back up to 35.80, which are these lows from uh, December. Obviously, the main catalyst to the drawdown in, uh, in all at the moment is the uh, talk about Iran, Iran sanctions being lifted over the weekend. So basically, Iran's pretty much good to go now on exporting oil, and so that means a lot more oil flooding and already oversupplied market. But we'll have to see how the landscape changes over the coming months um, because already some talk of uh, Russia perhaps producing less oil um, next, uh, this coming year. And so if Russia can work alongside oil, uh, OPEC, even if it's not really tacitly, but just sort of both doing the same thing at the same time, <clears throat> a number of OPEC nations already expressed their desire to, to cut production. So if Russia get involved, that could be enough to convince Saudi Arabia to do the same. And then we're in a very different environment where um, actually we've got enough producers cutting production to influence supply, and then we could uh, push back up to that 60 mark again in, in fairly fairly quick time. Mm. Given how quickly we've dropped down, you know, a quick drop in the market typically corresponds to a, uh, a quick rebound. <coughs> so, last one here before we finish, uh, look at gold. <coughs> If you'd been checking the chart forums, you'd see that I had mentioned this, uh, the, the, the low from uh, July 2015 as a potential confluence of, uh, of potential support, because as it was as this, on this big move higher from the low, it was also the 61.8% retracement pretty much, and a confluence of this broken down the trend line and this upward sloping potential trend line here, all pretty much in that same area, and we did get a nice tidy bounce from there. It carried us about $25 uh, just in the space of a day. So that did act as nice support, but we've done the first easy move. The next bit is actually taking us back up to the 110 area. That could be a top year affair. For those who haven't got involved yet, <clears throat> could be some potential for the market to drop down to the 1080 again. Uh, but obviously, that, that's been quite a strong rebound already. Um, so it may even not get down to 1080 again. Still, obviously, below the 200 day moving average. <clears throat> and uh, really an unconfirmed trend. <clears throat> so. The fact that we formed a, a higher high on the weekly chart helps you a little bit in, in going long because it's not such an outright downward, downwards market, uh, but nonetheless, formed a lower low and below the 200-day moving average. So risks of trying to bet on a recovery back to 110 and above, but it does sort of look like that way at the moment to me. You know, I've mentioned up here that this looks like a failed break of 1073, that July low. So we, we tried to push down, chopped around. The, didn't really make any headway below it, and now because we haven't managed to do it, we're heading up again. Okay, that's it for uh, this week's this week's webinar. <clears throat> Thank you very much for attending. Good luck with the trading this week. Just World signing out.